Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning. Welcome you all to this next lecture in this particular course on analytical, spectral and microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials. We have had a large number of spectral techniques till now. The last one being the exhaust related uh, uh, system, exhausts and zanes, etc. Now we will look at some uh, technique which is popularly known for organic chemistry, not so much so for the inorganic, but in the recent years there is a lot of development for making use of this technique for the inorganic chemistry as well. So what is that technique? That technique is nothing but the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So generally when you say NMR, if you say nuclear magnetic resonance nobody will notice or understand, but if I say NMR everybody will understand. So that is how the nomenclature of the NMR has come in. And they will only know about the organic molecules where these things come. And these are all diamagnetic and they have a limited range of the chemical shifts, etc. Whereas people are scared in the early days to touch inorganic compound at all. Why? Inorganic compounds, most of them are not so easily soluble in organic solvents, not so easily soluble in some of them in, even in the water. Not, not, uh, they are, many of these have got a lot of paramagnetic centers. So, there are a variety of giant like features are involved with inorganic systems. Therefore, people are scared of the talking about NMR for the inorganic systems and that is fact. But there are several instrumentation developments have come which are ready to take care of all of these aspects which I have talked about and then give you excellent information, highly resolved information about the structure, composition, dynamics all kinds of uh, uh, reactivity, all of these. So therefore, now we will try to focus on such inorganic kind of systems in this particular lecture. I think I may go through a couple of lectures on this and so I will also try to bring a comparison and contrast between the two techniques in the organic type as well as for the inorganic uh, kind of thing. First let us see a general thick picture of the NMR spectroscopy just to recall for us Okay, and if you know that the, the nucleus, this is from coming from the nucleus, nuclear spin. So the nuclear spin, when you put into the magnetic field, when you put in a, under the external magnetic field, what will happen? The nuclear spin will have the plus half and the minus half, and these plus half and minus half will get split into the two levels of this. So you have in, in the absence of magnetic field, these are plus half and minus half, but under the magnetic field of B naught or H naught any of these and these will uh, you know break into two, the degeneracy is broken and one of them comes into the plus half, another comes into the minus half. So these are the kinds of things that you have. Now and this splitting is the one which uh, is important and which we are going to look at in this. So, we, when you ex, uh, put the external magnetic field, you will split these two. Uh, so, but these two, the population, that means the spins which occupy plus half, which occupy minus half are almost the same, more or less same. Very little difference, maybe one or two or three in million. So, that if there are one million nuclei in the excited state, there will be 1 million plus 1 or 2 or 3 only the difference. So now what also decides this particular energy gap? So can we increase the energy gap? Can we decrease the energy gap? Yes, and that is nothing but the strength of the field. So if I increase the strength of the field, I can increase the gap. If I decrease the uh, field, I can decrease the gap of that. So why I should do that? I would like to do that because 
as you know the population difference uh, difference between the ground and excited state or lower and higher states between states would depend basically on the energy difference this energy difference comes from the field that you applied so the greater the field greater the that will make more number of nuclei excess nuclei in the ground state than the the uh, excited state why do you want to create that you want to create that because if you apply an equivalent energy to this these spins can transit that means the ground state the plus spins can go into the minus spin whatever can go that excess spin only can go so that is where is called the absorption so therefore so the kind of a energy that you electromagnetic radiation that you use would bring a cause this transition okay and that is where this is absorption so this is gives you absorption signal of course we know the other processes at present we don't go into that and all those spin which have gone from this low uh, energy level to the upper energy level will not stay for long there are certain relaxation times and within that relaxation time they relax back to this and and then you create again the population difference therefore again so therefore you can keep getting the absorption signal for of these okay so that is a, a kind of thing that absorption signal that you will get we will look into those details uh, in a little while and this so so one is that this is dependent on this particular the spin the field so this is a field dependent okay so the energy difference between the two spin states is dependent on the the external magnetic field that you are applying okay here yeah. now come to another aspect so this kind of a thing the spin even if you take the spin half itself uh, different kinds of nuclei are there uh, for example 1h uh, 19f 31p and 13c all these kinds of nuclei all of them have got so will they all have the same frequency where they absorb the energy level no because they have different gyromagnetic ratios they have different magnetic moments so that is a mu so the mu value for each one of these is different therefore the absorption signal will occur not at one place but at different frequencies and this frequency in, is in the range of uh, hertz which is known as megahertz so it is written so it is in the range of megahertz and it will be somewhere between 20 to 900 or 1000 megahertz uh, that is how it is now i draw your attention to this particular slide what i have already explained but i will show you through this particular figure which explains the same and you have a the frequency axis and you have a field axis here so go from left to the right and the x axis you increase the field field is in tesla but that you can always open and see any physics book you will know what the tesla strength means that you can always so going from 2.3 to 4.7 to 6.3 to 8.4 etc etc as you see that the frequencies are different this is for with respect to a proton or with respect to a hydrogen nucleus so with that to hydrogen nucleus this will be 100 megahertz this will be two at this field 200 megahertz at this field 270 megahertz at this field 360 megahertz at this field 500 megahertz as i told you you can go up to the 900 close to 1000 for proton not for all nuclei i also told you just while ago this frequency this frequency of absorption would not be the same for all nuclei even if their i value is half not that all i half will absorb at the same so these are all nuclei hydrogen 1h 19f 31p all of these 13c all of these i is half so this i is half but does not mean that they all absorb at the same so that means it is not just depend upon the nuclear spin but it does depend upon the nuclear magnetic moment so that is mu value that is mu value so you can see that that here 
If you take something like a 2.3435 Tesla, the hydrogen will show 100 megahertz and whereas the fluorine will show 94 megahertz and 31 phosphorus shows 40.5 megahertz and 13 carbon shows 25.2 megahertz. So that means when you say, but generally the spectrometers are based on the hydrogen frequency, 1H frequency and that. So people call, I have an NMR spectrometer in my lab, which is 200 megahertz, 300 megahertz, 500 megahertz. This means they are referring to the, what the, the frequency that suits the 1H. So that will be a little about 6% decrease for the fluorine and 60% decrease for the phosphorus and 75% decrease for the carbon. Okay. So now you get that different nuclei will absorb the frequency at different new values or energies of this. The difference is very small. That is why you have the population is almost the same with a very small difference in million. That is where so you need to. So as we see from the 1950s to 2000, the, this axis has started moving. So people have started initially making uh, making spectrometers of uh, 30 megahertz, 60 megahertz, then 100 megahertz, then 150 megahertz, then 200 megahertz, like that. As you go from 1950s till 2000, uh, etc. Now even 900 megahertz are also uh, being fabricated and then made available for commercial use. And those are all referring to the hydrogen nuclei. So these are all hydrogen 19f and 31p and 13c, all of these are i is half, but their frequencies are very different. So, 31p is 40.5 megahertz and 94 megahertz, you see that how the things are differing in this. I hope this you understood. This is the same whether it is a organic NMR, whether it is an organic compound, the principle is the same. Now, let me recapitulate for you that in in the presence of the magnetic field, the nuclear spin splits into the plus half, minus half with a very small difference in their population and it is that what you need to bring the population to absorb the energy, external energy which is in the megahertz region uh, which is called the this, uh, radio frequency. So, in the radio frequency it will absorb and then uh, the excite and then that absorption signal that you are measuring. Of course, there are relaxation processes which we are not going into the details and that is why the process continues that you get. And the second point I brought to your notice is the splitting of the energy levels does depend upon the magnetic field strength. The third point I have brought to you is it depends upon the frequency at which a nucleus absorbs is dependent on the nucleus magnetic moment. Now, these are the things that means all nuclei of a of a molecule, let us say a molecule containing different kinds of carbons, will all they absorb at the same frequency? If they all absorb at the same frequency, this technique is no use at all, you cannot get any information. Or whether all hydrogens present in an organic molecule, will all they absorb at one? No, that means something else is happening as well in these things. What is happening? Because in a molecule, every atom has got the nucleus, every nucleus has got the, the spinning, and in the magnetic field, they all create a spinning magnetic fields, spinning magnets will create a magnetic field and some of them will be favoring the nucleus at which you are observing, some of them are disfavoring. All these may be in line with the external magnetic field, may be out of phase of the magnetic field. Therefore, all the carbons in a molecule do not absorb the radiation at the same, some differences will be there. Whether it is a carbon, whether it is a nitrogen, whether it is a hydrogen, whether it is a fluorine, any kind of thing. Therefore, spectroscopy developed. Okay. So, that and this is uses the radio waves and the radio wave energies are small. Therefore, they are not any, they will not cause any kind of a damage even to use tissues. Therefore, NMO spectroscopy is used for the tissue imaging which today it, it is done as the magnetic, uh, uh, the, using the huge magnets we have seen in the hospitals where they take the imaging of that. So, because the radiation is non-invasive kind of thing. Okay. So, hope you have seen that and at different frequencies and the frequency is dependent on the mu and these are all the standard parameters. So, you know that. So, it depends on the external field and it depends upon your magnetic 
uh, moment of that. So, hope that is very clear. Now, we got a feel of the basic principle of the NMR spectroscopy, immaterial whether organic or inorganic. Having got this feel, let us look at how does an NMR spectrometer look like and what are its components. I again draw your attention to this particular slide uh, figure where you have number one is this tube, the tube is the one which contains your compound. Let us assume it is containing a compound in solution, the most commonly used and that you have. Now, what do you need? You need to put under the magnetic field. So, you see the magnetic pole under another magnetic pole and then you can use the, the you know electromagnets and you can uh, sweep the magnets as well by for the variation in the magnetic field or you can keep a constant and also uh, sweep the frequency. Both ways you can do that. This is the radio frequency which we are talking about and so the sample is now put between the two magnets and now this is spin at a very fast rate. Reason is that the molecules will have a tumbling motions and when they are stirring so fast it is like more like a stirring kind of thing. So, that means various molecules having internal magnetic field in different orientations will tend to cancel and you get a very nice resolved spectra and that is what happens in the organic but I will tell you in a while and therefore and we I talk to you that you can absorb the radiation and then bring the cause the excitation and that is what is called absorption signal and that signal is measured by this. So, radio frequency receiver, amplifier and these are all controls, consoler, etc, etc. So, in principle what you require is a spinning sample between the two magnets and a radiation which will cause the excitation and a coil which will measure the, the absorbed radiation in this ok and that will get relaxed again absorbed, relaxed etc. This is what you do a continuous absorption signal. I hope that part is clear. So, and I, I talk to you about the spinning is because of you make it a more homogeneous magnetic field felt by almost every molecule wherever they are sitting in the solution. Not 100 percent, but reasonably well in that context as much as possible. So, therefore, the organic which is dissolved, uh, those small molecular where the tumbling motions and ran motions are very fast and this is po absolutely perfect and you get very sharp kind of a signal. First, before we go into the inorganic part, let us look at most commonly, most popularly known for the last 60, 70, 80 years, the NMR spectroscopy is basically the organic NMR spectroscopy of that proton NMR spectroscopy which is known. Now, I gave some randomly some spectra here with certain kind of a ease and going towards the complexity and I would like to explain you this one by one and we will not go into the details why they are coming etc etc except for uh, mentioning certain things in this. Now, look at this particular spectrum and this is converted from the frequency into the converted into the chemical shift and uh, those are very standard kinds of things like you have a reference at what frequency and the your nuclei at what frequency the difference divided by the frequency of the field at which you are applying the magnetic field. So, at which you are applying the magnetic field that is 100 megahertz means by 100, 200 megahertz by 200. So, you make that so then you get a specific kind of a value and that value is referred as a chemical shift. So, therefore, NMR spectra are shown as a function of uh, the chemical shift on the x axis with respect to some standard call that standard as 0 and, and you can have positive, you can have negative, but right now let us look at the positive only for the organic very rarely you will find the organic, organic in, the, in the negative, but there are certain. We will not go into the details of that. Now, so now this is your standard here in this case as so you can call it as 0 of the chemical shift. So, and now this molecule is propane, propane in structure is CH3, CH2, CH3. So, you have the, so if all the hydrogens of that experience the same kind of a, a field and nothing else is happening then you should get only one single uh, signal, but no you do not get one single signal, so you get different kinds of signals. So, that means there is something is happening among themselves uh, CH3, CH2, CH3, okay. And so, what is, what is, what is that happening? Because 
every as I mentioned to you earlier, every nucleus in this particular molecule will act uh, will have a magnetic uh, uh, field influence uh, will act as a magnet and its magnetic field felt at the nucleus which you are observing with respect to the external magnetic field that is what is makes it. So, not only one there are several if you take any if you take any of this nucleus and you have carbon you will have the hydrogens coming from uh, the field every every of the nucleus. So, this will have from this and this this will have from this and to little extent you may also have of this in some cases may not be that means either you can have through two bond or you can have through space. So, the magnetic fields generated at every nucleus. So, at every nucleus the magnetic field is generated and they will be either supporting or opposing and the overall net effect with respect to the external magnetic field and that is how. So, the field can be lower than that or the higher because of this. This is what is referred as the shielding and the the shield. Okay. Uh, now, so if you see here, you will see two sets other than the standard. One is around 0.9, other is around 1.4, and here this delta is chemical shift, and this is what the 0.9. These are all shown in the ppm state. So, it is clear that in a molecule variety of hydrogens attached to different carbons or some other atoms in this case only carbons they do not absorb the radiation at the same they do absorb some little differences so they, that differences talk about the vicinity the how they are attached how they are connected both electronically and through the bonds. So, that is what is called the, the spin of this coupling with the spin of this spin spin coupling and also when you have other kinds of atoms there could be difference in the electronegativity therefore, electron electron aspects of releasing or withdrawing effects will also influence the, the nucleus under which which you are looking at the resonance of that particular thing. So, so all of those are important I am not going into the too much details I am just giving very briefly all that. So, therefore, these two if you see that they are equal in both ways you cannot uh, differentiate both chemically and magnetically in this and this is different that is why you get two sets. So, one set is here kindly look at the spectrum another set is here, but there are further lines are there, there are three lines are here and there are five lines are here which are coming from the spin uh, coupling. So, this will be coupling with respect to this and this and whereas, this will be coupling with uh, this one. So, that is what you see. So, that is there are the coupling numbers uh, uh, to n i plus 1 all those things number of. So, these are all very high resolved spectra the high resolved spectra because of uh, the everything is made homogenized homogenic field uh, is created and fast tumbling therefore, all the unwanted things get cancelled out and therefore, you have a very sharp kind of a signals in spite you have so many magnetic fields are being created at every nucleus in the molecule under the external magnetic field of course. So, every spinning new atom or nucleus is a magnet a magnet has a magnetic field and these magnetic field could be aligned with the external or opposing external field and how they are oriented with respect to the nucleus which for which you are looking at the absorption. So, those combinations are that. So, this further actually if you see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 a very small ones 2 here and this 5. So, that 7 comes from the 6 here, 3 here, 3 here, 6 because equivalent. So, 2, 6 into half plus 1. So, 2 n i ok. So, that is 7 lines that is how you get. And another hand for this one uh, for this one this is the one for this one only this, this is too far away. So, this will be 2 into 2 into half plus 1 is, is 3 lines. So, you will see the 3 lines. So, I am not going to explain in every case that look at some other molecule CH3 CH2 Br. So, you can see instead of a uh, hydrogen you have a bromine obviously, electronegativity is quite different uh, to affect this group maximum and to this group much less extent. So, but still there is influence of that. 
Now, this CH3 group now comes at 1.7, 1.6 ppm, whereas earlier it was seen at 1.9 ppm. So, that itself you can see the electronic effect uh, that is on the nuclear pin of this particular hydrogen. And the other one, which is this CH2 group, which is directly attached, will go further. So, that is earlier 1.4, now it has gone to 3.3, 3.4. So, the splitting is basically depend upon this one. This is 3 nuclei, so it will be 4 lines here, you can see here, and this is 2 nuclear neighbor, so that will be equal to 3 lines. So, the 3 lines voila, and the, the 4 lines, you can see that spectrum. And this is the standard. Now, you can also see that uh, area of these signals can be quantified and this quantification will tell you this is and when you when you use some comparison of the intensities you can say can be, is it 2 is to 3. So, it will go with the 2 protons which is this CH2 and it will go with the 3 protons which is the CH3 or 3 hydrogens. So, you can get quantification how they are, what they are, what is their neighbor. Uh, so, this the, the extent of shift and the kind of splitting will tell you the neighbor how it is situated, the particular hydrogen is situated in what manner in the molecule. That means, you can derive the structural pieces of information. Here another one, it is the ethyl acetate CH3 COO CH2 CH3. So, this is one kind of a methyl, this is a CH2, this is another kind of a methyl because it is attached to this C, this is attached to O with one linker. So, here you can see that this CH2 comes here and this has only CH3, so this is a quadrant is at 4 uh, ppm. So, earlier you have seen 3.4 ppm here. So, here you can see that CH2 is here and this CH3 is also quite uh, come down is 1.26, 1.3 and then you have another methyl here and this is not coupled with anything because there is no hydrogens nearby. Carbons will not couple because carbon spin is half, but its abundance is very small. Therefore, low abundance you will not see at all much unless you enrich with the carbon 13. So, that is around 3. So, one kind of a methyl is coming at 1.26, other kind of a methyl is coming at 2. That means, you can differentiate different types of methyls that are present in the molecule. Similarly, here the CH2 oh, here and the CH2 here, it is at, attached with the Br and they come in at 3.3, 3.4 and this is attached with the oxygen, it is coming at 4, 4.1, so different. So, from the chemical shifts, you can find how they are bonded, what they are connected to, that means structure integration of that. Now, let us go from small simple alkyl based kind of things to aryl based thing, some example of that. So, if you look at the aryl based ones, you can see an example a phenyl group with a CH2 with a CHOH and CH3, CH2, CH3 you can see that. So, this is one kind of a CH3 which is coming around 0.9 just like very close to that of this one. Then there are these two hydrogens H2 to a prime and they are coming with a huge multiplet because this is connected with this methyl group and this is connected with this. So, this will couple into four lines, this will couple into three line, uh, two lines, all these have come into that and between themselves also there is a uh, a kind of a difference. So, therefore, a huge multiplet is coming, but the intensity area it comes to the two hydrogens. Then comes is this OH hydrogen does not couple because it is far away and therefore, that comes here with a little you know attachment some this. So, triplet you will get and now this hydrogen will couple with uh, this one and this one all of these. So, you get multiplet of that. Now, this CHOH now it is 4.1 level and all these aromatic protons are coming here it's a bit around 7.2 7.3 range if you expand you will see but here it is not expanded you don't need to worry about it but now can you also see the resolution of uh, each of these hydrogens yes you look at this example it is bonded through uh, one six position so para positions so this side is ethyl this side is acetyl so that means there is an asymmetry in chemical. The chemical asymmetry is involved. Therefore, this side hydrogens, these hydrogens, these hydrogens will, be, will differ in terms of their electronic effect. So, these two will form one set, these two will form one other set. Therefore, you get two sets of signals in the phenyl region and you see 7 to 8, you got two protons, two protons. 
So all others have come here. So now you can see the moral of the story is that different groups come at different, even if they are same CH2, even if they are CH3, even if they are phenyl CH, even if they are uh, the alkyl CH, they all differ. They are attached to what kind of an atom, how far they are from that. So there are the magnetic fields affecting. So this is what is called shielding and deshielding. As the deshielding occurs, they go to the left side, which is more and more positive. Shielding occurs more and more less positive or more negative with respect to your standard kind of thing. Let me just say, having said that, uh, the most popular NMR is the diamagnetic for organic. Is done organic, polar, non-polar, aqueous, all this. And this is proton. But today, even C13 in the last 30, 40 years, a lot of C13 has been very well studied. And if you look at this later on, when you have a time, you can look at that. It is always given as a range. As I told you, same CH2 will not have one single frequency of absorption. There are different frequencies depending upon their different uh, the, uh, the vicinities. Sometimes even solvent can also affect uh, these things as well. So therefore, each one is shown like a bar, means range and different kind of groups. Uh, an alkyl kind of a hydrogen or uh, acetylene kind of a hydrogen. Alkyne hydrogen which is connected to sulfide, which is connected to OR, which is connected to fluoride, connected to chloride, so many things in the ester and nitrogen. So you can see oxygen connected, nitrogen connected, sulfur connected, closely connected, far away connected. So they can be connected close or far because their electronic effect will differ. And that is what is referred as a high field, it's called shielding, the low field region is called deshielding. Okay? So therefore your individual resonances will be shielded or deshielded, therefore their frequency of absorption will change. Therefore, same kind of a group will absorb differently in a molecule. Before I close, let me also show the same thing in another way uh, that you have. This is the tetramethyl sign which you use it as a highest, as a zero. Then you have this is tetramethyl carbon and you have the cyclohexane type and acetane type and the methyl. So these are all different kinds of groups as you see that they are going in different. So you have the increasing magnetic field at a fixed frequency, increasing frequency at a fixed magnetic field. You can see that. So these are all increasing from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, etc. So that's so magnetic shielding or deshielding of a nucleus. This concept is very very important because of that you have a different frequencies even though the group is CH2, group is CH, group is CH3, group is uh, you know another. So they depending upon what they are attached to. So this is what is most popularly seen and in the next class I will start with the inorganic part. I need to do this uh, organic part a little bit because this is what is most popular and this is what is taken as a reference point of view. So, uh, so I will get back to you on the uh, inorganic uh, NMR, what kind of NMR, why the inorganic is treated very differently, uh, why the inorganic thing has not been developed from the beginning of NMR these 50s which is uh, developed only from 80s and 90s etc. So all these things we will see in the following classes. Thank you very much.